Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to mod this Sega Saturn. To do this we've got some new solder, uh, 0.4mm diameter, super thin, super thin solder, some Kainar wire, um, Kainar wire there, our glue gun, soldering iron, Saturn itself and a 4-in-1 card. It's this 3-in-1 at the front here but it's actually a 4-in-1. So you get the action replay function for cheats, you get the 4 meg memory expansion for games that require it, the one well, 1 meg, 4 meg memory expansion, and it also lets you play multi region games, which is the only reason we're, the main reason we're using it. Also, if we open this box up, inside this box we've also got our mod chip. There we go, which is a V2 mod board from consolegods.co.uk or Rob Webb. He's an awesome source. So, I'm going to make a clear way and begin disassembling the Sega Saturn. Right, so now we're ready to disassemble. If you turn it upside down, You'll see that there are five screws, regular screws, two at the front here, one at the side here, and at the back there's two down these like gaps here, like either the side. So we'll just go ahead and remove them and come back to it. So with all five screws removed, the lid then just lifts straight off the top, and there's no ribbon cables or anything like that. So I'll remove the lid out of the way, and you'll notice at the back. The panel covering the battery just drops out, so just put that somewhere safe as well. Right, and we're at the Saturn here. So, we need to just identify our board version. So let me just put this to the back a second and unpack it and mod chip. So let me go modify, um, identify my Saturn. I'll be back in a second. Right, so for Sega Saturn identification, you can see if it's got this white line here, it's a version 0019. And our board does not have that white line there. If we scroll down a bit, to, that's what to do with the mod chip if it's that way. So this one, there's no white line there. Then this is a 0014, let me go back. If there's no white line there, then it's a 0014 system, which is what our PCB is. No white line there. Um, and then this is what we do with the chip. We jump that point for our version of motherboard where it says 0014 and 0019, we jump the two points next to the 14. We just go have a look at the other boards just to confirm that we don't have one of them. That board there, the 64 pin one, oh no, the 14 old board, it has a ribbon cable connecting to the front of the board, which ours does not have. And the other one there uses a Sanyo drive, where it says Sanyo at the side there, and ours does not have that, it says JVC there. So it's a JVC drive. Um, yeah, so that's all the versions of the boards. So ours is a new version 00114, this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump those two points on the mod chip. So yeah, there we can see there's three points in a row in a line there. And we're jumping the two to the left. And the third one we'll leave unbridged. So let me plug in my solder now and get it heated up. Right, so now we've bridged those points, we want to apply some solder here and solder this lead to there. I'll just heat that pad up a second. And as we're heating it, apply solder to it. Like so. So it's got a nice pull of solder on there now. Yeah. Kind of way to it. There we go. So that's a nice wire soldered on. This end's going to go to the Saturn. So let's make a bit of a clear way here. Remove the ribbon cable from the CD drive board here. Let's give it a mod chip a second. So gently rock and pull up like so. Right, so we move this ribbon from the board like we've done. Now on mod chip, we've got two sections. One's labelled out, one's labelled in. From the in, section, we're plugging our new ribbon cable here. This is going to connect back to the CD board, CD drive unit. So, this goes in like this. Like so. And then we want to get it out one to this side of the mod chip. Like so. So 
So, like that. Right. I'm going to put some tape down there, just to insulate it, and then that's where the mod chip's going to sit. there's any overhang. Right, and then that mod chip can sit there now. I'm going to secure it in place now, I'm just going to put a bit of tape over the top, just so it doesn't bounce up like that. Right, so that's it in place. That's it taped down, like so. So, for the other end of this kind of wire, basically, it's coming to this pin connector here. So I'm just going to shorten it a bit, because it's a bit overly long. I'll just snip it there, about the size. I want a bare, about half an inch of the wire. So, this is my wire bearing tool. Don't breathe in those fumes if you use a lighter. Right. So that's about an inch of actually bared there, but you only need about half an inch. So remove from the board the ribbon connector gently. You don't want to break it. Right. And now the second in from the right, what we're going to do is we're going to shove the kind of wire down there. I'm going to shorten the wire as well because I've got too long. So, there we go. And at the second, connect to like, like so. And then when we reconnect this in the board, that come loose. Right, I need to get a better angle. So I can see as I'm doing it and you can see as well. So let's. Press that in again like so. I'm like coming out as a turn away. And then back into the drive board. Like so. So if you can see there, it's going there. That gives the chip five volts. So that's the install done basically. We just need to go test it. Two last things I want to do, which I forgot to mention, and I've got to do. Um, so, on the mod chip, on that one point I soldered here, I just want to put hot glue over it, like I always do, just so that wire doesn't come loose in the future. It should never come loose, but with glue, it definitely will. There we go. Right, so that's that point just glued and then I'll retake it back in place. Right. So that's that bit done. And finally, if you remember from my swap trick video if you saw it, we um, permanently shut this drive sensor button so we could do the disk swap. Um, but now we've got the mod chip in, we're gonna remove this uh, bit of tape. So let me get on with doing that. There we go. This is coming off. Normally I would leave this in or I'd do it with glue like you've seen on my PlayStation videos but um, you don't need to disc swap on the Saturn. You know for like the action replay you're actually using the card, the 4 in 1 card. So that's the system done. What we want to do now is just reassemble. We'll just go over what we've done first. So we bridged the two points on the back of the mod chip for our version, our model of play, uh, Saturn and we've soldered a cable from the power um, port on the mod chip to 5 volts on the Saturn board. You don't have to solder it into the board, you can do. You can bear the wire and solder onto the wire, but it's easy just to push into the pin. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble and test it. So reassemble it is dead simple as I've shown you before. 
you just put the lid back on like so so it's not lined up correctly like so then flip it upside down and reinsert our six screws our five screws sorry also that's it fully reassembled now but I want to do one last thing um, because this unit is asking me every time I turn it on to set the date it means that the battery here, this lithium battery is no longer holding the charge and it's not recharging with the system being on so I want to replace this so I'll have to go find an old one out of an old motherboard so I'll be back in a second again I've got this battery out of an actual new motherboard that I've not actually used so let's stick it in here push forward push down into place like so right so now last step put the cover back on and we're ready to go let's go show you some testing some games right so let's switch our TV on to external and power up our Saturn now I haven't put the 401 card in yet because I just want to show you something hopefully we'll set the date here for the last time so what is the date it's the 1st of November is that the date or the date? Day of month. That's the month, uh, the day. So, 1st of the 11th, 2012. And the time is 4pm, 1 minute past 4. So, 16.01. Exit. Alright, that's so the last time I have to set the date. Right, it's just going to go to its browser here now. Right, so CD player. What I'm going to do is turn it off, open it, oh, that's the open button, and we're going to put in a PAL game, which is British PAL, uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga Disc 1. Right, the reason I'm showing you this is to show you that it boots PAL backups perfectly fine without a 4 in 1 card. Without the 4 in 1 card, yeah. I didn't ask me for the date again, which means that battery's working. So you see it's booted it straight away. Which is brilliant. But now, let's turn that off again. Let's say I wanted to boot an American game. You go get the other Panzer Dragoon. Which is NTSC there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's NTSC I've written on it. And I'll try to boot that. You'll see that it won't boot because while it can read CDRs now and boot CDRs, it can't boot uh, out of region games. So you see, game disk unsuitable for this system. So if we power this off again and we insert our action replay 4 in 1 card, like so, and we power it back on again, we'll see here now it'll boot the action replay. Should have built with the action replay, maybe we didn't put it in right. Let's try it again. Maybe it won't see you quickly. So there we go, so it's booting the action replay now. Action replay. EMS Industrial Limited 96. So we don't want any cheats, just start game, you pick, and then start game without cheats, you pick, load in, and you see this now lets us play imports, it also let you play original imports as well, which is one of the good uses of it. So as you can see, this mod chip's working, it was a successful install, and that's um, another modification done. If you enjoyed this video, please rate and subscribe, and join us next time as we do something else cool.